All right. Welcome, Amber Hamilton, to the Self-Employment Success Podcast. Thanks for having me, Leland. I'm excited for this conversation. Um, For listeners, Amber is obviously a great entrepreneur, but also has been a friend for years, Mm -hmm. basically since uh, I moved to the Virginia Beach area, which is awesome. So that's, you know, going on eight years now. Has it really been that long? I know, which is wild. Um, But she also is an entrepreneur with a great story. Um, And so I'll let you take it from here. Tell us about your business. What do you do and kind of where does it stand today? Today. That's a great question. (laughs) (laughs) And most entrepreneurs would be like, (laughs) <laughs> we're all kind of like, I think I know, you know, <laughs> I know what I want it to be. Yeah, I know what I think it <laughs> I is. I know what I think it is. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, uh, my business right now is I do basically sales consulting, sales and branding consulting for startups. Um, mm. I have a couple of different offerings, but I focus um, on helping people really I just use this analogy, get the spaghetti out of their brain and make it make sense. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so often entrepreneurs have a million ideas Mm -hmm. and they're visionaries. So they're 10 years down the road, but really understanding how to take those practical next steps to build the foundation and get it off the ground Mm. is really challenging. Totally. Everything feels urgent and important and not everything is urgent and important. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I come in. So I help them really figure out what are these key next steps? Um, and then at, depending on what stage they are, if they are ready to go to market with a product or service, we help build out their go to market strategy so mm. they can prep for investment um, and, you know, be really prove their concept in the market so that investors are interested in them. That's awesome mm-hmm. and necessary. I feel mm-hmm. like right? <laughs> I've been in my business for a while and I'm still trying to take spaghetti and turn it into like a waffle. Uh, where it's like in right. nice little compartment. Like, does it make any sense? <laughs> yeah. 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 Totally. Yeah. Um, I think every entrepreneur can relate to the like mm-hmm. just living in the future and having a million and a half ideas. Right. And then you're like, you know, listening to podcasts and getting right. even a 10 hundred more a ton more <laughs> yeah, yeah well, and even earlier today i was on the a call with a um, guy and they he had done one iteration you know we i'd worked with him through one iteration of it totally fell flat which it happens mm-hmm. and he was like do we abandon it do we re-? you know and so as he was talking able you know we were able to pinpoint like what he needs to do now you know what he needs to do next mm-hmm. and what parts totally die because mm-hmm. they weren't they They just didn't work. Yep. And what parts do you salvage to bring into the next iteration? Because the entrepreneur's journey is, at least from my perspective, I feel like it's presented as this very like um, romanticized, mm-hmm. like flashy, like we get all these venture capital back and then we get all this <laughs> money and then we're like, and I'm free and we're, free, I make and we're just like building this amazing company and it happens quickly. And it's, you know, there's all this energy and momentum, mm-hmm. but the truth is it's a long and arduous mm-hmm. and there's often multiple iterations of what your business is going to be mm-hmm. before you really figure out what is the thing that is going to make you where where you fit in the market, right? Totally. Like, what is your product or service? What pain does it really meet? Um, who's going to pay for it? Mm-hmm. How much are they going to pay for it? Like, it takes several iterations and pivots in that, and it's late nights. You go usually go through every human emotion by ten a.m. You know, you're <laughs> <laughs> you're like, this is a terrible idea. This was the best idea. You know, yeah. So, eight a.m. You're like, this is going to work. And then you're like, this isn't this gonna is going to work. In the day, you're like, I had one good email. <laughs> We're on the up and up. <laughs> yeah. And like somewhere around 3 p.m. You start looking for jobs. Yeah. <laughs> you, always, you always just keep LinkedIn. Uh, and like zip yeah. Right there. You're like, oh, I mean, I'm looking. I'm <laughs> open to work. Yeah. yeah. So it is, you know, really helping entrepreneurs um, have a better and healthier sense of what this journey mm. and process really looks like is also part of kind of the role that I play with. Gosh, them. that's mm-hmm. so valuable. How did you... What's what's the background story of Amber <laughs> Hamilton? Like, how did you get here? How did you get? Listen, we don't into have this? enough time. <laughs> <laughs> like, where? How did you stumble your way into this sales consulting world? Uh-huh. Why startups? Kind of just tell us the journey that yeah. brought you here. Yeah, well, that's actually a great word to stumble into. It is fairly accurate. <laughs> <laughs> Ironically, I I mean I graduated college and went right into 
while I was working for a nonprofit doing fundraising, which in my mind is sales. Mm -hmm. And then um, I have four kids. And so I was stay at home mom for a bit and, you know, but always was doing something either in event spaces or sales. Um, and when I went back to work um, about eight years ago now, seven or eight years ago now, um, I managed to land a job being the general manager for a bridal and um, high end gown store here in the area. And it was like, baptism by fire, learning mm. again, what it means to be full-time working, how to lead teams. You know, I had a staff of over 30 women ranging in ages from 17 to 77. Sure. We had three different storefronts, you know, <laughs> there was a lot of inventory, you know, sales training, how do we mm. increase sales? And, and we did it. Like I, one of my philosophies as a leader is just hire people that are better at it than you are, because mm -hmm. I can't be the expert at everything. And so I stayed in my lane, which was, I'm really good at leading people and I'm good at helping them understand how to sell a product. Mm -hmm. Like what's the language we use? How do we overcome these objections? But I couldn't sell a tuxedo to you to save your life. Mm -hmm. Right. So I hired someone and she grew that department by almost 300% in a year. Wow. So, you know, and then we did, we got really strategic on sales and we increased our sales about 200% in, in every department over the course of the time that I was there, which wow. it's, that, huge. it's huge. And it was, some of it was just simply low hanging fruit. It was just putting better processes in. It was making sure people that walked in were really qualified. It was leading a team so that they, we didn't have high turnover, right? Like the mm -hmm. higher turnover you have, the longer it takes for you to ramp somebody's sales up again and get them comfortable there. So simply being able to retain employees longer and, and create an environment where they wanted to work mm. um, was a huge piece of that. And then COVID hit and the wedding industry. Oh yeah had to take Just a pause, pause. <laughs> at home beach. <laughs> I mean, it was a mess. Um, and so it just, it became a great opportunity for me to, to move on. I didn't want to keep working nights or weekends, um, because I have kids and mm -hmm. wanted to be able to be with them. Um, and so a friend of mine had started a startup, um, and launched it and he was like, will you come help me do sales? And so I went from selling bridal gowns to selling software to consultants, which again mm. was a huge learning curve. <laughs> and I was like, I would be sitting in meetings, just like writing down acronyms and then Googling them to figure <laughs> out what I was like, what is this private equity? What mean, you know? Yeah. Um, but again, I learned a ton and through that, I learned a lot about the startup world. And I also learned a lot about again, even more sales. And the whole second year I was there, I was doing sales and customer experience. And I was literally consulting consultants on how to sell themselves mm -hmm. and get clients. Cause they were like, I'm great when I get in there, but I don't know how to land a client. A lot of these people had left during COVID, their jobs during COVID mm -hmm. and wanted to, they were like, I'll just go out on my own, you know, I'm, and, but they didn't, they didn't, uh, respect the fact that they had had whole sales teams at the mm -hmm. companies that they had worked at or that they, you know, didn't have a process that differentiated them or so I was doing a lot of coaching and for them. And last August, I was like, why? Like, I kind of had an opportunity handed to me to be able to go out on my own. Mm -hmm. And so initially I was, again, the entrepreneur's journey, I was going to go in one direction. I had a strategic partnership lined up with a private and independent school association. And I was going to thought I was going to do some consulting for them for their business offices hot tip if you don't have an education background <laughs> they don't want you yeah. <laughs> and that's fair <laughs> even though i was like no no it's like your business office they were like we don't care yeah they're like we what do you know about schools yeah and I was everyone like, needs education to be an education to be fair i don't know anything about schools i sent my kids to them yeah <laughs> and that's all, you know, so I spent a large chunk of my life in them. I have been to school. Uh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never seen the background. <laughs> Never seen. Yeah. So, um, but during that, I just got connected with the 757 startup studios, um, mm. just kind of through networking. And I was like, Hey, I'd love to mentor more so because I had time and I was curious about that ecosystem. And last fall, this time last fall, I started with them. And I fell in love with it. I fell in love with working with founders. Mm. I, all of a sudden it was like, 
all these things in my life that had like had like led me to this moment and like prepared me mm-hmm. because and just the way that I'm wired and the way that I think um I was I'm able to hear like this brain dump of this is our idea and this is where we think we go and this is it and and be able to just say it back concisely and they're like wait yeah that's it like we haven't been able to put it in those words or we mm-hmm. haven't been able you know and again helping them figure out the what are the steps that you need to take to um to kind of really be productive and not busy for the sake of being busy, but mm-hmm. really actually being productive. And, um, and so, and then I was starting to see a few things. And so I got with the director there and I said, let's, can we put together a four part series? I want to test this out. Right. Mm-hmm. So he was, he was, the hunter was so great. He was like, yeah, let's test it out. Cause I'm like, I'm hearing these same four things. We're having trouble. Not, I call it the word vomit where you just tell, you know, every <laughs> single little detail about your company mm-hmm. and then you've backed somebody into a corner and they don't want to, their eyes have glazed you, over. Lost, you've lost them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like they're not buying anything from you. They're not investing in you. Like they're, they're just trying to figure out a way out of the They're just trying to get corner. out of the conversation. So how do we talk about it? Who is your target market? How do you figure that out? What is the sales process? How do you begin to develop it? And then mock phone calls. Because the other thing I found was founders are amazing at building a service or a product. But the idea of getting on a phone call and selling it makes them want to crawl under a desk. Mm. And um they're not like us who can talk to a brick wall, right? Like <laughs> I'm the first guy. I've got you in the corner. We need lots of words. <laughs> no, that's usually me too. I'm yeah. like, calm down, Amber. Stop yeah. talking. This is why I'm doing this. this is why I love it. This is why you should love it. This is all the details about it. Exactly. They're like, Whoa. oh my god, <laughs> can I go yeah. now? <laughs> yeah. So and my kids even make fun of me. Like if I'm in line somewhere and I come back, I'm like, oh my gosh, I just met the coolest person. And my son's like, how do you do that? Like, and, <laughs> yeah. and they even start joking me now. They're like, where's she from? And I'm like. Minnesota, isn't that amazing? <laughs> so, but that's not, that's not, most people aren't wired that way, right? Yeah, you know, totally. and so what does it, and how do you have an effective sales call? Because even for talkers like us, like that's not actually effective. You've yeah. got to be really good at listening and asking the right questions and guiding. And so we put that together and it, it went well. Mm-hmm. And it was like, oh yeah, we're hitting, we're, we're hitting on something here. Mm. And so I've just developed these offerings um, for startups in different stages where I can come in and kind of be a key, you know, <laughs> help them, you know, regain some sanity, put mm-hmm. some processes in place, you know, depending on where they are. And um, it's been a blast. That's awesome. It's so fun. Yeah. There's like probably 50 questions running through my head. So. <laughs> We come out of COVID, you're going, or before COVID, Mm -hmm. you're going back to work from being a stay-at-home mom, Mm -hmm. get this job in this bridal Mm -hmm. store where you're the GM, you're like running it, Mm -hmm. all of it. And so, you know, drinking from a fire hose, figure out how, what you're good at. I'm good Uh at teaching people how to sell. Uh COVID happens, move to this tech startup. Uh So now you're getting the startup feel, Uh but you're also still drinking from a fire hose on those skills. (laughs) Um, there was one between that and the 757, right? Startup. Mm-hmm. Okay. So yeah. then move into the 757 startups, which mm-hmm. tell me a little bit about that. Is that, mm-hmm. were you working there or were you just a volunteer no, mentor? Just mentoring. Okay. Yep. Just mentoring. So I was kind of like, I had some time. I was trying to flesh out what, what I was going to do. You know, I was kind of running down this one path which I, in my gut, I knew Riley wasn't going to work mm-hmm. um, again because I didn't have an education background. Um, oh, that was it, the, yeah. the, the schools. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but then, um, and I, I had been doing some other stuff and got hired in January by a guy and we doubled his revenue. Again, he was a bootstrapped founder, meaning he was mm-hmm. self-funding. Um, and we built out some, just again, it, oftentimes it's not rocket science. Like I think when people think sales, they think it is this super complicated, you know, and, and maybe and some, I mean, sometimes the, it can be a little complicated, but at the end of the day, especially in the, for startups, it's like, what's the low hanging fruit, right? Like, mm-hmm. how are we leveraging your network? Like, do you just have a good process in place for tracking this? Are you actually following up with people? Mm-hmm. You know, so a lot of times people are like, well, I've got all these leads, but I don't know. I'm like, okay, have you called them? Have you called them? And yeah. Like, I got a call and I'm like, I mean, you can email them too, but like, you should probably reach out. (laughs) (laughs) 
Mm -hmm. Somehow you need to get in contact. Yeah, we should contact they them. They don't know they're a lead. <laughs> right. Or they may. Like sometimes yeah, it's like they've true. literally like filled out a form on your website. And they're just waiting to be contacted. And they're just waiting for you to reach out to them. Or they downloaded a, you know, something that you had, yep. like a one pager or a value add or, you know, or could we figure something out like that? Again, driving these leads. And so it's oftentimes it's not rocket science, but people feel like sales is just overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, no, we'll just do it one stage at a time. And, you know, you've got these big, huge sales trainings and, you know, they're good, but what they're really, all they're teaching you honestly is how to connect with people mm -hmm. and how to really have a, an authentic conversation mm -hmm. and, um, and make sure you're speaking to the person whose pain you really can solve with your product or service. Mm -hmm. Like, again, it's not rocket science. It's just having a better perspective on, how do I combat an objection without being pushy? You know, how do I, again, just trust the process. If you follow up enough, like somebody's going to get back to you, you know, or mm. um, how to send, I call it the breakup email. You know, you usually get 30 to 40% return, like response rate on a breakup email. And people are usually like, I'm so sorry. I'm still interested. I just was busy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. so it's little things like that, um, that, that I, over the past couple of years, even with, bridal gowns and then with software and then, you know, it's kind of the consistent, those are the consistent pieces throughout. Yeah, you, you had so much entrepreneurial experience <laughs> in this, whether you were the actual entrepreneur or not, that you kind yeah. of realized no matter what these industries are, uh -huh. there's a common thread uh -huh. of everyone's trying to figure these things out, Right. which I find to be really true. No matter if you're selling widgets or you're right. mowing someone's lawn or yes. you're a CEO, like everyone's trying to figure these yep. key things out because they're, right. the, they're the keys to success in a business. Sales, mm -hmm. you just need them. Mm -hmm. It is how you make the money. Right. So if you're, <laughs> if you have this great product and no sales, doesn't matter. If you have right. a great service, but no one's buying it, right. it doesn't matter. Right. But everyone's good at the product or the service, not how do we get people through uh -huh. the door. Right. And I think that barrier is what prevents a lot of people from mm -hmm. even becoming entrepreneurs. Yeah. Like, yeah. How do I sell this? I don't right. like it. That it's a scary unknown. It is. Yeah. And then it's spaghetti because there's also a million other things. Right. And then you play office, which is what I call being busy just for the sake of being busy. Yep. You're yep. like, just, why is your email still open? Like, no office. one's emailed you in town. Like, <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> it's like, Truly, you're just yeah, like yeah. sitting there doing like moving paper around yeah. being like, this is clearly so important. And it's right. Like, you're not using your time right. purposefully, right. efficiently, produ yeah. productively. Right. Yeah. And so what you're doing is filling a huge need yeah. for these people of being like, what is productive? Right. What is your skill set? Right. Where do we yep. bring in the other ne necessities? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and what are the processes? Like, yes. I feel like processes is such a um, entrepreneurial buzzword, but it's so necessary. <laughs> right, we it just, is. We just brought on another employee this week, and so I'm like re-looking at all my processes, being like, these make sense to me. Yeah. Now they need to make sense for everybody, or like, yeah. how do we do this? Right. And yeah, you know, to have these things and roles and and systems mm -hmm. in place make it easier to when you're in the meeting with someone. Yeah. It's I've done this a million times. This right. rolls off my tongue. Right and is organic and natural, but it's not, or it's organically inorganic. Yeah. 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 Well, <laughs> it's like, um, it, when you have the, when you have the foundation and you have the process in place, even if you have a call script, right? Mm -hmm. Like even if you have a call script for your brand new, you know, sales baby to come mm -hmm. <laughs> practice it, the, the benefit is you can, you know, go off script some, you can improvise, but you can always come back to that. Mm -hmm. We know these things work or we're paying attention. And these are the key objections that we consistently hear. Does that mean we need to change our product some or service? Does that mean like we need to adjust yeah. it? Does that mean we need to um, do a better job of communicating up front what we <clears throat> do or how we fill those voids? Does it mean we're talking to the wrong people? You know, so mm. even being able to track some of those things of how do we, because not sometimes people are going to complain just to complain, right? Mm -hmm. Or you're just talking to someone who's not your 
target yeah, market. Not a fit. They're not a fit. Or they seem like your target market, but just for this person, it's not. Right. Exactly. Um, or it's not the right time or, you know, and so again, like when you're in a sales call, I talk all the time about like, I call it Fanta. You might hear Bant, but it's, um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, do they have the funds? So I like using funds, mm -hmm. not budget. Funds means, again, set the psychology behind it. There might be funds available, but if it's not a line item in the budget, then it's hard to mm -hmm. finagle that. So do they have the funds? Um, are you talking to the person who has authority to make the decision? Mm -hmm. Do they have the need for it, for what you have? Is timing, are they in the p position to purchase in the next um, little bit? And then um, I totally blanked on the last one, but um, I forget what the last A is. At the well, moment. I like Fant. 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 <laughs> I'll think of it. It'll come to me in a little <laughs> bit. But, you know, again, like, oh, oh, like ask specifically, like, when will you mm. like, when are we making this decision? Like, is it because sometimes people will be like, yeah, 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 let me go talk to my team. And they're just being nice and pushing you off. Mm -hmm. But when you can ask those specific questions of like, will you be ready to make a decision this month? Or is it in two months? Do we need, or is it next week? Like, so you can and even as you ask to follow up, like, do I have your permission to email you again in a week if I haven't heard from you? You mm -hmm. know, so it, again, it just there's clarity around that. There's a process in place. So, you know, when you're in those calls, OK, I've got my checklist or if they're not yep. the authority, who do we need to talk to? You know, so um, and then you can duplicate that. Right. So especially in startup world, what does it mean to be scalable? How do mm -hmm. you really create a process that if I bring someone else in, they can fit right in and we can now mm -hmm. duplicate this, um, you know, over and over again. Yeah. Like we're standard repeatable processes. Mm -hmm. Like you can come in mm -hmm. and just plug and play mm -hmm. in some ways. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And easily ramp somebody up to make money. So you're mentoring at 757 mm -hmm. startup, mm -hmm. startup 757 or 757 startup. So startups. it's a 757 collab and collab. they have the angel investors and then they have an accelerator, which is a 12 week program they do once a year. Um, for so we've got seven companies in there right now and they're a little bit further down the road, right? Like they have an MVP. So they mm -hmm. have a product or service that is got some meat on its bones. And then the startup studios is I got a napkin idea mm -hmm. and I need I want to see if I can flesh this out. And that's about a six month program. So I mentor with them. And the angels are like the shark tank. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Okay. So they and got they it. pick and they, you know, meet and they kind of look that, you know, you apply to to get investment and. Typically on angel investing, they will, I mean, it depends on the fund, but usually eight to 10 companies they'll invest in a year with the expectation that two of those will go Take off do and well really make it. Um, and kind of they'll recoup any losses that they got another investment. Um, but, <clears throat> and those, it takes time, right? Mm -hmm. So like they're not expecting a return usually till three, five, seven years down mm -hmm. the road. Mm -hmm. um, I just picture Shark Tank. Yeah. Like, yeah. Hi, sharks. Hi, sharks. <laughs> um, okay. Does your so, dog need a bone? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you take a bone with me and yeah. invest in my business? Exactly. Um, I feel like that's like a, my wife and I just watch Shark Tank. It's, it's like an it's embarrassing fantastic. thing we do. And no, we, no, um, I feel like anytime there's an idea that we throw around, it's just like we just we say, Shark Tank. Hey, sharks. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Um, so you're, you're mentoring there. When did the actual launch into your company's called Intentional Foundation? We haven't actually uh -huh. said that yet. Oh, yeah. Um, well, it's getting kind of a rebrand, but yeah, we'll figure that out. <laughs> uh, it See? is was, depending on when you were listening. <laughs> depending on. Currently, it is Inten, short for Intentional Foundation. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, when did you start Inten? Like, when did uh -huh. that come into the process of you saying, we've got something here uh -huh. that's really working. We're touching on some stuff. Mm -hmm. I should make this my own business. Yeah. Well, ironically, in 10 was an LLC I got a couple of years ago because I had this whole other business idea. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. That's a longer story. Um, <laughs> yeah. I was going to do this, like how to help women get on and stay on a strong career path. Mm. And it, all the collateral was going to be in 10 minutes or less. And it was mm. all going to be intentional. So when I launched kind of went out on my own i was like well i'll just use this llc because it's mm -hmm. silly to here, yeah. pay for another one and do all that kind of stuff yeah. um but honestly one of the things that i'm working on right now is it, i need a new iteration of i need to pivot and not pivot but like now i need my brand and my company name to fit what i'm doing mm -hmm. um so that's that's kind of the next step for me like i don't have my website up because i didn't i like had a little thing up and i was like 
well, this keeps changing, so I'm just going to go yeah. ahead and take that down. Yeah, it's not so, actually speaking to what yeah, I do. Yeah, right. So, like, my LinkedIn profile is, like, oh, up to date, and, like, I kind of keep that active for people to get in contact with me. Um, but honestly, up to this point, I've it's been referral based, like the people mm. that I've worked with. Um, so I haven't really had to create your own sales think process. Think a whole <laughs> lot about my brand name, but I, um, that is actually on the roadmap for this year is, you know, a awesome. new name and a new website and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But again, as an entrepreneur, you know, it, well, I don't know, has yours changed some, I mean, you're in financial advising, so it's, well, yeah. And my, I feel like my process has changed. I feel like I've explored, um, when I left my last firm, I knew it's great if people work with retirees, that's mm -hmm. not what I get excited about. Yeah. But I didn't have like a total clear, this is my avatar. This is yeah. the needs that I really mm -hmm. love. I had some ideas, right? but it was still pretty vague. Yeah. Um, so I didn't have any real clear messaging. Mm-hmm. And over time have really found, like, I love working with self-employed mm -hmm. professionals, love working with millennials, people in their 30s and 40s mm -hmm. who are building their life mm -hmm. and building their business and just overall building. Yeah. Um, because I kept coming into people in their 50s and 60s who's like, you have a lot of things that need help and that's great. Mm -hmm. I need to, you to build a time machine and go back yeah. to your building years. Yeah. and. And over time, I, I similarly started seeing a lot of the same themes yep. among people's fear of paying taxes yeah. or how do I invest or I don't have a benefits package because I'm my own right. business. So how do I do these things? And so kind of similar to you, I, I've shifted over time and kind of just learned like these are the things that bring me to life mm -hmm. that I can provide a lot of value mm -hmm. in. And from there, I've had to, I'm, I mean, my sales process, even just my financial planning process has changed probably yeah. Three or four times. Yeah. And I feel like my website is a constant. Yeah. Fluid. <laughs> yeah. Like, I feel like every day I look at it and I'm like, I need to change that. Yeah. Or like, we need to change this because yeah. that's yeah. baby peace link. And now we're kind of like teenage peace link. Yeah. You know, like we're yep. growing. Yep. Yep. And just especially with, I'm sure you can relate with startups and um, small team solopreneurs, yeah. like p the the people running it are changing and evolving. And so yes. the business will naturally change and evolve. 100%. It's not like a yeah. stationary thing. Right. You look at even just major things like McDonald's. Right. When I was a kid, you walked in and every, like there were like burger shaped chairs right. and like yeah. crazy colors. Yeah. And now they're more like sleek and yep. modern. They're changing their messaging and yep. products over yep. time yep. to match right. things. And so, yeah, I think definitely over time I've had to do a lot more soul searching and just figuring out, Right. What works, what doesn't work, what speaks to people. Why, why is what I'm saying not connecting? Yep. And is that because of who I'm trying to connect it to? Or is that mm -hmm. because of what how I'm, I'm saying how it. I'm saying mm -hmm. it? And um, which would have been really helpful to have a consultant <laughs> on me do that. Hey. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> truly. I'm yeah. Because like, it is um, like spaghetti versus the waffle. Mm -hmm. And and I get that analogy. Our uh, the couple that did our premarital counseling kind of uh -huh. said like, Leland, you're a waffle. You like compartmentalize everything. Uh -huh. Lindy is spaghetti. Like it's just yeah. more fluid and flowing yeah. and kind of intertwined. Yeah. But it's also really helpful. I found as an analogy yeah. for me in entrepreneurship. It is. As like, it is. Well, because you have so many thoughts going on mm -hmm. in your brain all the time. And because there are so many pieces, you don't have a sales department and an accounting department and a this department mm -hmm. and it, you are all of them. Yep. And so it's like, okay, well, how do I, again, how do I set in motion the things that are going to be productive where I'm not doing activity for activity's sake, right? Because totally. there's, that's the other thing with, I think a lot of, there's a lot on the market right now that promises big, fast results. Mm -hmm. And I am telling you, like, overall, it, it's not true. Yeah, won't work. It, it, won't it, happen. it won't happen. And yeah. what will, what will happen is they will deliver on their promise to get 50 phone calls on your calendar, mm -hmm. but it's going to be 50 phone calls of five to 10 of them might be actually qualified. Mm -hmm. And now you've just wasted so, much, so time. much time. And so again, like strategic activity that doesn't burn you out that, you know, and again, there's times where 
you know, it's the grind and the push and the hustle, mm -hmm. but again, how do we be really strategic and set up these processes that will, because I think the other entrepreneur lie is we're going to hit a certain revenue milestone and I'm going to have more free time. Mm -hmm. Nope. Lies. <laughs> <laughs> so many lies because the more revenue you get, the more expectations you are, the more mm -hmm. this, and, you know, and then you've got to build your team, which means you need more revenue, which means, you know, and so it's this crazy mm -hmm. cycle. So if on the front end, we can build some processes and systems in place that free up your time mm -hmm. and you can begin to go into this business and this world of, you know, owning or running your own company with healthy, I mean, I hate like healthy boundaries, like healthy work-life balance mm -hmm. where you set the tone and really build it around that. And again, those processes are the thing that makes it so easy. Oh my gosh. So, much is. so it's always worth it to invest in those things at the beginning spend the time figuring out what your brand really is spend the time like don't just hire a quick fix anybody mm -hmm. hire somebody who's going to say i'm in it with you for a little bit of the long haul we're going to it's going to be slow you're going to get frustrated but mm -hmm. i'm telling you in six months from now a year from now you're going to be so grateful we put these processes and we built out your crm and we mm -hmm figured out the language that works and we did good market research and we, you know, like mm -hmm. those are the. It is true. We, we launch our businesses and then just start spinning our wheels immediately. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And, but, but this idea of like, I'm trying to think of, um, there are some consultants in the financial advising world, how they say like finding what works and just doing the reps, mm -hmm. like, as opposed to just, like you said, doing 55 calls for the sake of doing 55 mm -hmm. calls it's what actually works. Mm -hmm. What do you, what value do you actually provide? Mm -hmm. How, like working on that and knowing it's just going to take mm -hmm. doing the reps, yeah. following up with your leads, yep. follow, like getting, doing whatever yep. it takes to get leads, right? you know, and like almost putting these things in place that help you say what I'm doing is actually productive and it's still going to take, take work. You're not yeah. going to launch a business and not yeah. have it work. Right. I feel like on Instagram, my Instagram just sends me like entrepreneurship stuff now. Yeah. <laughs> but everyone's like, watch how I made $35,000 a month in yeah. three months of just yeah. doing Instagram. And you're yeah. like, yeah. I doubt that's true. And if it yeah. is, like, you're yeah. the fluke. <laughs> yeah. Well, and nine times out of 10, what they're actually doing is getting paid to sell somebody else's program and they're yeah. getting an affiliate, you know, yeah. here. Someone just should... started paying you $35,000 <laughs> a month to post this. Because right. so. you already had a big following, which you didn't. Yeah. So yeah. it's, there's a lot of chaos out there. And I do, I, I'm working on a um, workshop right now where it does talk speak to this because mm -hmm. again i think i said we talked about earlier like it's like this glorified entrepreneur yeah you know it's all unicorns and rainbows and we get this big huge heavy funding from venture capitalism now i'm a millionaire and i can yeah you know, and, it, and it's like no you're gonna be like crying over your computer at 2 a.m i i had someone on the podcast <laughs> a couple months ago when i asked the question like what was the low point he was like i mean like every day at some point it's just all the time <laughs> what day are you asking because yes. and i mean people do it for a reason there's wonderful uh -huh. pieces to it but you're right like i think it's again uh not from an entrepreneur's Ship perspective but from like a financial planning perspective mm -hmm. there's so many clients the world just screams get rich quick yes like Here's the one investment right. you need, and right. it's going to change your life. Right. You're never going to have to do anything again. Right. And I talk to people, I'm like, if it sounds too good to be true, it, it is. is. Yeah. And like, we want you to get rich well, not right. necessarily get rich quick. Like, oh my gosh, that's such if a we good can do, way to say it. If we can mm -hmm. do both, great. But right. like, for the most part, <laughs> right. we know things compound over mm -hmm. years, and right. we want to do the, the right things repeatedly and well. Right. And yeah be excellent so that your wealth actually makes sense and serves yes. you and is yep. the most tax efficient all these yes. things. Um, yeah. As opposed to just saying, here's like the one, you know, GameStop that everyone's jumping on and now you're totally. going to lose all your money in six months because right. it flops. <laughs> yeah. No, a hundred percent. No, that's a, I love that. You get rich. Well, not like uh, yeah. build your business. Well, yeah, <laughs> no, like, totally. Right, I mean, know? it is. I mean, that's, and that's part of why I even, was intentional foundation. It was like, if we build an intentional foundation, mm -hmm. 
you can grow from that because again, you can, if you do this really, and I tell my clients all the time, I said, you are writing chapter one, mm -hmm. but you're looking at companies who are on chapter 15 mm -hmm. and you're like, well, how do we get there fast? You don't. <laughs> If you ask them, they're like, <laughs> they didn't. we thought we'd be at chapter 30 by now. Yeah. But I'm like, we're at chapter 15. <laughs> well, and even like you have to, it's like, even like Netflix was selling, sending DVDs, you know, 15 years ago before they totally transformed. Amazon was a bookstore. Amazon was a bookstore. <laughs> TikTok was Musical.ly. Um, Facebook was a, a, a thing to, so Zuckerberg could get dates, you yeah. know? <laughs> That, I mean, Facebook was a digital version of a college yearbook. Yes. Like, like colleges had it. the Facebook, which yeah. was the yearbook. Right. And he was like, let's make it digital. Yeah. Right. Debbie, 60 year old Debbie from down the street on Facebook, mm -hmm. probably didn't use it as her college yearbook. For She's sure just she like did not. angry yeah. at the guy who sped Ex too fast. Ex <laughs> yeah. So every company with major success has had multiple iterations and they wrote, but you've got to write chapter one really, really mm. well. You've got to build that foundation. You have got to be willing to put in the time and the effort and say, I will do it little and often over time is where you see, again, mm. putting in the reps, like that's where you see the, the change. And that will give you the ability to have longevity mm. within the marketplace. Because if with a strong foundation, you will then be able to pivot when the market says, actually, we're going over here. You may even then be set up to see market changes. Mm -hmm. in order to, you know, so you can be flexible, be flexible in the and, and be ahead of the curve, you know, but again, you've got to, so you're not always spinning your wheels being, you know, reactive. Mm -hmm. You really can be proactive as you build your business. I think the reactive proactive thing mm -hmm. is huge. I just feel like, in, I mean, again, business or not, people yeah. kind of are walking through life, letting life happen to them. Like they're All just the in the river yep. and just going down the river as opposed to being intentional about like, what am I doing with my life, with my time? No question. Yeah. It's true of business. Yeah. Most people are just in the river. They get started and they kind of follow the little template on yep. rocket lawyer and right. yeah. are just letting it happen to them and are getting yeah. reactive to, whoa, now here's a fire. Now here's another fire. Yep. And they're just firemen. Yep. Yep. As opposed yep. to, like you said, being proactive to say, how can we anticipate some of these things? Mm -hmm. How can we build this well? Mm -hmm. On the book analogy, if a book has a really terrible first chapter and doesn't lay a good foundation, right? no one's finishing it. No one's finishing it. Yeah. They're going to they're gonna put the book down and leave and say right? that was a bad book. Totally. Yeah. And same thing for your business. If you cannot figure out how to, your, when I, and when I say brand, I mean like how people experience you and understand what you do as a business, like you got to get that down. Like even for me, mm. it took me six months to be able to come up with on freaking LinkedIn. Like I take startups to market. Like I have, I, right. Like, yeah. and that's a piece of what I do, but like, that's the most concise and clear yeah. thing I can say that gives people context mm -hmm. for what I do. So I get you to revenue quickly, right? Like I'm taking, we do mm -hmm. go to market, but like that's. And that's helpful because that's not just, I'm a sales consultant. Right which doesn't tell them anything. Right. Like if I, the fastest way for me, if I'm on an airplane and someone like, mm -hmm. I don't want to talk to someone and they're like, what do you do? I'm like, I'm a financial advisor. Yeah. They're Done. gone. Conversation. <laughs> yeah. <Done>. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if I say like, I help self-employed professionals optimize their business finances yep. Yep. so they can get the most out of their business. Great. Now we're talking. Now if they're interested, uh -huh. they'll ask more. And right. if not, they'll self-select out and great. Great. You know, like, yep. Yeah. Um, and even that, I feel like is a weak line. I'm working mm -hmm. on my little like. <laughs> yeah. Well, and my that? friend Kate DeLeo, she's with Ennoble. She does brand. She always says brand is the fastest um, path to revenue. Mm, that's um, your get rich. Quick. That's your get rich. <laughs> yeah, it is. Because it's like when people really understand who you are and what you do, then you can easily create marketing and you can tar mm -hmm. easily target people and say, hey, I know who we are. I know what I do. I know who I'm for. I know what I'm for. I know how I can fix your pains. Mm -hmm. So it makes those conversations way more strategic, way more effective. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah. you don't get lost in conversations with people who aren't a fit. Right. Cause people are like, Oh, I'm yeah, not yeah. self-employed. So it's fine. <laughs> right. You know, and then yes. great. I'm yeah. not going to spend my wheels doing 50 right. calls with people yeah. where only five of them fit yeah. what I'm trying to do right. because I can market better to the people Right. So people are self-selecting out and more people who I want to self-select in are. Yes. And that's a good know. point too, Leland, is that like, 
as a startup and a small business owner, you have to come to terms with the fact that you're not for everyone mm -hmm. and you can't be. Because I think oftentimes, like I see entrepreneurs and they kind of get these dollar signs. They're like, oh my gosh, this is like a $12 billion industry. And we get, and I'm like, it might be, but like your piece of the pie, like figure out your piece of the pie, yeah. you know, and you're not going to be for everyone, you know, like mm -hmm. pet food might be a $40 billion industry, but like, listen, I, I am not the dog parent that is like painting my dog's toenails and like giving it, you know, <laughs> like I, I'm like, yeah. So I'm, I use the dog food that the vet tells me to use and that's it, mm -hmm. you know? So I'm not, so, and it's like, well, if we get this new, you this know, one's organic, this new one's organic and like, organic, and this, I'm like, I am not, I might be part of that $40 billion industry, but like, I am not. Yeah. You're, your you're looking for the organic dog food people, exactly. which make up a part of that industry. A hundred percent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or, and when you think your target market there, it's like probably the, dog pet owner that doesn't have kids. Cause like part of my problem is I'm like, listen, when you take a number, I got four boys over here that I got to <laughs> feed before you, you know? Like, yeah. like, and there are some people who are like, I'm not that way. No, they're like, they're how could you ever put your dog after totally. your children? And you I'm know? like, that's your market. So what's, yeah. what's that size market? Now we're talking like, what's your branding towards them? How do you speak to them? What do they love? Like, how do you, you know? So again, it's like, just really being intentional. It's really mm. dialing it in. It's really figuring out what the story you tell is and then how to get in front of them. Um, and um, you do that. And it's like, there's enough niches out there for enough people to make a livable wage if you just do it well. Oh, and yeah. You build it well. The, mm. I've said it once. I'll say it a million times. The riches are in the niches. Oh, I the the, I re, the riches are in the niches. The riches are in the niches. <laughs> um, That's the, so I, good. I did not coin that, no, but I do love it I and did. I believe it. <laughs> um, so for you in this journey, what surprised you the most of this whole stumbling story? Yeah. What has surprised you the most? Um, this is going to sound kind of crazy, but like kind, kind of how good I am at it. Mm, Honestly, I love that. I, I really like from... And, you know, just even the personal side of my story, like graduated from college, got married young, like, and kind of just assumed I'd be a mom. You know, I came from a background that essentially that was what I was, I don't like to use the word groomed, but like, that was kind of what the expectation was, mm -hmm. but I was just going to be a mom for the rest of my stay at home mom. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I, you know, bounced around here and there. And then when I got a divorce a few years ago, it was like, well, <laughs> Cause I've got to go back to work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and like, I knew at that time, you know, I had background in events and some sales. And so, and I kind of, again, I didn't stumble into the job, but like I applied on indeed. And then I happened to get hired. Um, but overseeing three stores after being a full-time stay at home mom for seven years was kind of a, I'm still to this day. I'm like, Ashley, why did you hire me? You know, <laughs> <laughs> she took a risk, but we did good work, you mm -hmm. know? And, and so I think for me, the past five years has really been a journey of learning what I'm good at, um, realizing that I'm, I have these pretty incredible strengths in mm. certain areas and then being real confident to say like, Hey, this is my lane. Like I am the first to say, Hey, that one's above my pay grade or that mm -hmm. one's outside of my, I know somebody that you could talk to, but that's out. I'm not. Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stay that, in my lane. That thought right there is a podcast in and of itself. In and, and like, of itself. That is just not, yeah, not my lane. That's not I'll my lane. I'll hand it off. Yeah. I'm going to, I mean, I've no got an incredible that. network of people who, you know, especially when I work with founders, it's like, Hey, we do need to get a lawyer over here. We need to get, you need some video or you mm -hmm. need this. It's like, again, I'm good on the strategy. I'm good on the branding. I'm good on your sales process, but even for marketing, like, I know enough to be dangerous. So we're mm. going to pull in someone for marketing, you know, mm. like I, I understand certain things here, but we're going to pull somebody in for that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, finances way out of my league. <laughs> nope. <laughs> like, is that a spreadsheet? I'm going to go throw up. <laughs> yeah. Hate that. I right. hate that. <laughs> but yeah, I think the, the biggest thing, and I, especially this past year has been really like, I think, and you even said it, like realizing like what brings, what lights me up mm -hmm. and what I'm like, the parts that I'm good at, I'm like pretty, pretty freaking good at it. Yeah. You know? And it's like, Hey, that's kind of cool. Yeah. You know, like I, so I really, I've got something really 
big here to bring to the table and it matters. And, mm. and I'm going to stay here because th- my piece of the puzzle really matters. And yeah, we're going to knock it out of the park with you. I love it. Mm-hmm. What was the low point for you? <laughs> well, um, being a single mom to four kids mm-hmm. and trying to feed them. Sure. <laughs> That makes sense. Quite honestly. They're, they're all boys and they're not they're small. They're all boys and they're not small and they eat a lot of food. Um, I think the the low points for me, um, gosh, that's a good question. I, I mean, it's been a lot of wrestling. I, there was a probably about three months ago, I could tell I was right at the precipice. Mm. And I, was, I was like, I figured it out. Like I'm here. Mm -hmm. I know what I'm doing. And I was like out of money. Mm. And so I was sitting in this really low moment of like, did I just work this hard Mm. for the past nine months to have to go get a job Mm. or like have to go do, you know, like, and I was literally sitting there and luckily I, I have the privilege of having a community of people and a family that is like as invested in me and this as I am. Mm. And often more, they believe in me more than I believe myself, which I, in mm. myself, which I think is not, I think I know for certain is why I'm where I am now is because the community of people around me on those low moments were like, you have not worked this hard for mm. there to not be fruit on the other side, like Amazing. keep going. So, um, you know, in that moment, it was kind of like, all right, we're gonna, you know, I had some people that were like, well, we're gonna fund the next little bit because we believe in you too. And it ended up being literally like a two weeks later, I landed a huge, like a really big client. Um, and I was like, yes. Like that I is the that is like the stories that like yeah. entrepreneurship is made of. I know, right? And then it was like, and even over the past couple two months, it's like, oh my gosh, I figured out these smaller offerings that really work. And it's mm. like it's been so cool to see. Again, I'm I think I'm in the momentum piece now. I think, mm-hmm. but it seems like <laughs> it takes a while to trust it. It really does. It's yeah. like I think we've hit a I've hit a point where. I've done enough of the work. I've put in the hours and the time, especially mentoring, where I now am confident to say I can give two hours free. And then it's six one and a half hour sessions for fifteen hundred dollars. And I will walk through this piece with you or it's, you know, an hour discovery call and then scope of work with, you know, like Mm -hmm. I've I've worked enough and have enough successful iterations of what I've done over the past year to go, Okay, I'm confident enough to say, here's what I can do. And then here's where we need to go, you know? And, um, so I think that's the part that's, yeah, but that, that moment, it was probably, I mean, it wasn't that long ago. It was right at the beginning of the summer. And I was like, man, uh, this may be like, I really don't want to throw in the towel, but I may, but I'm at this point where I got to pay my bills. I got to feed my kids. I got to, you know, and, and then I, and I will say with that, if there's one encouragement I can say to entrepreneurs is get a couple of really good people around you mm. because you are going to have dark days and you are going to want to throw in the towel. Like we mm. joked earlier where it was like 8 a.m. You're excited. 10 a.m. It sucks. Mm-hmm. Noon. You're excited again. 3 p.m. You're looking for jobs. <laughs> 5 yeah. p.m. You're, you know, like that's going to be fairly consistent. But having people around you that will be honest enough with you to mm. say, Hey, it's, it's time, time to throw, to throw in the, in the yeah, towel. Yeah. Like this, you gave it a go, but like, this is a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> or the others. Or, like, or the works. others who are like, uh-uh, like keep going. Like we, we have watched you. We are hearing how you've grown. We're seeing mm. the work you've done. We also believe you're right there. Like keep going. We, cause there, there are for sure going to be plenty of days where you, you need someone else to believe in you more than you believe in yourself. Wow. I mean, that. That's the nugget of the call, everyone, right there. <laughs> um, okay, so this is a podcast about success. Mm-hmm. But if you pull anybody on the side of the road and ask them what that means, you're mm-hmm. going to get a different answer from yeah. each person. So for you, mm-hmm. how would you define success? And how mm-hmm. will you know if or when you've achieved it? When I've achieved it. Um, two, I think there'll be two things. The first is when I consistently and confidently know I can provide for myself and my kids, Mm -hmm. you know, that there's, 
consistent revenue mm -hmm. that, you know, I know that there's, and even if there's a slow month, cause consulting, sometimes you just don't mm -hmm. have a client Yeah, that I've built up, um, the, we we're okay. You know, mm -hmm. it's, um, there's, there's some reserves so that there's just a sense of, I, I don't, I don't have a dollar amount, right. Mm -hmm. It's like, and I don't live terribly <laughs> lavishly. Yeah. I've got four boys. We can't have anything. nice. <laughs> like, Even if you afford it, they're going to destroy they're it. They're going to destroy it. <laughs> Mommy couch is from Walmart. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, but it, way more for me where it's like, yeah, yeah, we got McDonald's money, you know, like mm -hmm. there's no big deal. You know, it's like, yes, I can say yes to kind of just the day in and day out mm -hmm. that there's an opportunity to save up for a trip once a year. You know, just I just want to live comfortably. I don't mm -hmm. again, I don't need the huge house. I just want to know that there's revenue that with my company, mm -hmm. I am. I built this business where I can provide for myself and my kids. The second thing is within my business that there is impact in communities mm -hmm. that wouldn't have had it otherwise, because the thing I love the most about founder 